can't believe it. I can't believe it. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? It's a bittersweet weekend for Manchester United. We lost a true, a giant, a behemoth of the sport, a, a giant for this club. Sir Bobby Charlton, rest in peace, passed away this weekend. Um, and let's hear from the late great himself. And we were playing against Bayern Munich, and then we were a goal down with two minutes to go. And, and I thought, if we can just get the ball into the box, but, you know, you can call it blind faith what you want, but I thought, if we can just get the ball in the box and we can get a goal, it'll give us that little bit of extra time. We'll win this still. I was convinced that we could win. And then uh, the ball came across, and, and because it was two minutes from the end, Peter Schmeichel, the goalkeeper, came, came up. And I don't know what it is about the Germans, you know, they could be very orderly and disciplined, but it threw them completely. You know, they, they had all the plans for who they were going to mark, but suddenly this great big blonde goalkeeper, this Dane, came up and, and it threw them completely. And, and, and suddenly, for the first time, there was, there was a bit of disarray in their defence and, and the ball fell to Ryan Giggs, who, who hit the ball into the... Or Dwight York first, hit the ball into the box. Four of, four of their defenders had gone with Peter Schmeichel and then... The ball fell to Terry Sheringham, and, and he, he didn't hit it well, but he hit it goalwards, and and then you see the back of the net, and, and they just and I'm up, and I, I can't remember, I can't remember really. I remember apologising to some people in front of me for jumping over them, very important FIFA officials as well, and then uh, and then I sat back, and I, I tried to keep myself cool, and and but while I was actually thinking, keep cool, keep cool. We went and we, we got a corner. David Beckham knocks the ball across. Teddy Sheringham helps it on. And, and Gunnar Solskjaer knocks the ball into the net. And as, as the ball hits the net, for me it was as though the world stood still. I thought, this is, par this is what paradise is all about. It's got to be. And, and I honestly do not remember what I did for about five minutes. I went up to my wife and my, my daughter and my son-in-law were up there. I, I, I dashed up to them, I dashed back and, and, uh, and suddenly the world was great again. And, and I thought, well, this, there is nothing ever going to be better than this. An absolute magical quote from arguably the greatest Manchester United player of all time. You know, people use the term goat quite a bit, but Sir Bobby, you can't beat his resume really uh world cup winner european cup winner ballon d'or winner by the way he held the all-time scoring record until wayne rooney recently broke that one but did everything for the club survivor of uh the munich air disaster as well and you just hear it in his voice i think the most amazing thing about sir bobby it isn't just what you do on the pitch it's who he was off of it and he was an ambassador for this club he was a fan of this club and just an amazing gentleman. And, you know, uh, all United fans are mourning across the world. Uh, I was absolutely shocked when I heard the news yesterday. It was a gut punch. It was a gut punch. And I think you said it well, sir. The Manchester United is in mourning. I mean, he is a giant of this club. He's a giant of global football. He's a giant of English football. Like you said, only Englishman to win a World Cup, European Cup, and Ballon d'Or. Also only United player to do that. Survive Munich at 20 Saw a lot of his, his good teammates, including his best friend, Duncan Edwards, die. Uh, and then built the team back, obviously, with Matt Busby. If there was a Mount Rushmore of Manchester United, three people for certain would be on it. Busby, Ferguson, uh, and Charlton himself. That fourth spot, maybe it's John Henry Davies. Maybe it's you know someone uh, between now and the last 50 years. But those three are, for without a doubt... Uh, icons of this club. You gotta put Henry Davies on. There. I, I would we, say so. we haven't had a Mount Rushmore debate. We're not having a but debate. I mean, no, I, there's I, four I, I on Mount a, Rushmore. I know there are. The three are obvious. JHD is up there. No, baby. I would say he he saved yeah. the club, named it, built OT, first major titles. This is about those are those are the four icons of the last 150 years of this storied storied club, and he is as big as they come. You know everything he's been through, like you said, what the impact he had on the pitch, academy lad. Busby Babe, Munich Air Disaster, first English team to win the European title, um, and then 
he came in as an ambassador and director of the club as it was suffering and hurting in the 80s, was instrumental in bringing Fergie in in the first place in 86, helped keep the board off his back for a while, even while things were struggling in early years. And it's emotional. It's emotional for everyone. I, I saw it and I was like, my heart sunk. Um, and it's just, it's sad to lose someone who's that significant to all of us. And also, you know, he had a full life. He had a great life. But even still, you die at a ripe old age in the mid 80s as a as a man. It still feels like a huge loss. And, you know, I think all of us are kind of shell shocked on that, especially to juxtapose that with, you know, the way United's playing at the moment and everything that's going on around the club. And here I'm talking about 99 and just like how things have changed in 25 years. But here we are. No, but he just he was uh, even when he's in the stands in 99, he, he, he's almost on the pitch. You know, the way he's talking about it, he's like, stay cool. He's in the director's box, like going absolutely nuts. Uh, what a win, talking what it means to him to see United win another European Cup, uh, their second European Cup at the time. Um, just great words from the man. But, sir, we do have a match to break down. Manchester United playing lots of games. It was nervy away, Bramall Lane. I said 1-1. One, one. You did. Without a DeLow banger, that's what we're looking at. Uh, United struggled. Uh did not come out playing vintage United football that Sir Bobby could be proud of in the first half. Had a little bit of magic in the second. Um, but again, this team grasping at straws, struggling for form away. He just looks sapped. This is the worst team in the league. Bottom of the barrel. Ollie McBurney Who? running at the defense. R we were struggling to just deal with them. The energy they had uh, took us by surprise. But look, the lads get the three. It's ugly. You got to take it. We have to somehow these scrape by wins. Brentford, Sheffield. It's ugly. We're winning. You love that. We need to get some momentum at home. Copenhagen need a proper performance. We need 90 minutes from this team looking good toe to toe. Obviously, we're injured. Lots of different things happening right now at Manchester United. 100%. Yesterday was far from convincing. Tough win. Um, gritted it out. Had some good chances to kill the game off, but didn't. Like you said, they came at us. We came out super slow in that first half and let them grow into it. And that shouldn't be what it takes to beat a bottom of the table. Sheffield United at one point. But win baby wins the motto. Win ugly. Who gives a fuck? It's about three points, and it's about building it from there. But we have to figure some shit out. we got to figure out a starting eleven that makes sense, even with a back four that's completely makeshift. Everyone in the back four is injured. But that midfield never really made sense from the jump, right? McTominay in there instead of Erickson or even Mount. We couldn't possess the ball. We couldn't move up the field. He obviously scored the goal. Um, but, you know, much better in the second half, I think, when Erickson came on. But either way... It's just about looking forward, not about looking back. The best thing is, is we have played like absolute dog shit this season, and we're only five pounds off of uh, top four and six points off of first place. So it's like maybe this team can figure out how to play good football, and then who knows what could happen because to be where we are is actually kind of a miracle because we still have everything to play for, and we have played very poorly this season. Quick PSA for the podcast. You like the Muppet take. You like cheering on this club, the ups and downs, everything we've been through. Support the podcast. We don't have any commercial sponsors. We're 100% fan back. The best way for you to support the podcast, patreon.com slash America Red Devils. We do a behind the scenes episode every single month. Tons of extra great benefits. Please sign up. Check it out. That's not your bag. We have a store, America Devils dot store. Great merch hoodie. I'm wearing the hoodie right now. We got beanies. I've been rocking because it is fall. It's beanie also, season. Great scarves, Eric Ten Hogs, Red Army, EFL Cup, baby. Let's go. You won $5 off. Code EFL Cup. Check it out. We got you covered. Support United. Support this podcast. And check out our website, americadevils.com. Great fan-generated blog content. Sir, tell them about iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews or five-star reviews, wherever you listen. It's a great way to support the pod. It helps us get found organically by other Muppets like yourself. And even better, we're giving away free American Red Devil Design scarves. All you have to do is write that five-star review on iTunes or Spotify and send a screenshot to AmericaRedDevils at gmail.com with your mailing address. And I'll personally pick, pack, and ship a free ARD scarf. Send it right to your door anywhere in the world. Here's a great one from Ada. 
at a cool United is a disaster. Tell us about it. Uh, find the podcast two years ago. And since then saw the drama Cristiano leaving and the three managers sacking of 21, 22 season. I love the enthusiasm that you and John bring to the podcast and never miss a game to recap and review. And being an Ohio fan is hard. Like the Browns, Cavs and guardians on the scene. One title win in 2016. And thank you for doing the podcast. Thank you for the review. Thank you for everyone listening in. And Hey, they had to win yesterday. Like it wasn't convincing. We had to, you can't lose the day Bobby fucking Charlton dies. The, one of the most important people in the history of this club. It's just not acceptable. Alex is coming hot f bombs early in the pot here. True. All right, we're talking Sheffield United 1, Manchester United 2, Bramall Lane in the English Premier League. Let's get into that 11, sir. Onana and net. No big mistakes from the big man. We had Lindelof, Johnny Evans, Maguire, DeLow back line. You talk about duct tape. There it is. Scotty McSauce. <laughs> I'm Robot in the midfield with Bruno in the hole. Rasher on the left. Anthony, number one bluffer on the right, doing nothing. 80 something million, sir. Not a chance. And then you had Hoyland, the dog, the Danish dog up top. So, you know, I got a dig one, big up one. That's the 11. How you doing? Back four, you know, we're, we're, we're a mess at the moment. It was always going to be a makeshift back four. The thing that didn't make sense to me, Sauce is good in the box. This midfield, I know he was pushing forward a little bit. He was playing more advanced. Sometimes Bruno dropped deeper. I thought we needed something that was more possession based. I thought we needed an Ericsson. I thought we needed a mount. And I think you saw that in that first half. I mean, we didn't come out well. But even still, like we couldn't pass through their midfield, and it's fucking Sheffield United. So I, you know that didn't work, and I think we saw that in the second half of the changes. Yeah, there you go. You're going away. You think it's gonna be physical? You get the height from McTominay to Plan A. They are they, big. They are a big hey, team. How many times have we seen this Manchester United Plan A doesn't work? We come out doesn't look good. Sheffield United all over us. <laughs> Fourth minute ball deflect. Sheffield United. Ollie McBurney. This should have been a goal. I mean, this was right there. Tough. A uh, scuff shot for him. Big save, Onana. It was right at him, but at the end of the day, you know, this was a huge opportunity for Sheffield. Right off the bat, we're on the ropes. Probably their best chance of the game, to be honest. I mean, to be honest, it fell right to him. Seven yards out, he has to score. Uh, and thankfully, he didn't get much behind it because, like you said, this should have been a goal. Wasn't a goal. Arguably the best chance of the game. And then they had another really good chance not too much longer after. 25th minute, DeLow gives the ball away. Onana tested by a strong shot outside the box. Good save with his right hand. And it was going all going Sheffield United's way to start the match. And against the run of play, Scotty McSauce. Rashford for Lindelof. Bruno Fernandes. Drilled in and McTominay bobbles it in. He's done it again. Manchester United's new goal scoring hero. Two last time out. It is a steal in the Steel City. Can't argue with that. Man United have been well below par. And this wasn't easy for Scott McTominay. It comes at him really quickly from Bruno Fernandes. An awkward height, but he deals with it so well. Look, well, credit McTominay. He's the one who's scrappy getting after it. And when he when I saw him get this ball off his chest, I'm like, he's gonna score. Because he just has that. Like he's just all over the place. But he's got that scrappy eye for goal. You know, credit to Scotty McSauce. We needed this one. We looked horrid until this 28th minute goal. Yeah, I think they started waking the team up. And then really when we gave the penalty away. But that's where you want Scotty McSauce. You want him in the box. You want him scrap. He's got the size. He's got good feet. He's a good finisher. And he showed that again today. It's like all of his goals, they're hardworking goals. And this one, we needed it. And then, you know, football's a tough sport, right? Not too long after, sir. Uh, you know, we get a handball Literally call. Literally a minute. After. For McTominay, and it's a penalty. And protests his innocence, but Michael Oliver is convinced that what he saw. Penalty. McBurney against the Nana. Hit with a block. McBurney. McBurney. McBurney looks like Mbappe, bro. He's like, what the fuck was that? You know, another all time like Matty Cash, Ollie McBurney is up there. Great name. All, like all I mean, time EPL name. names. I mean, there's 
<laughs> There's too many of them. I mean, Onada, okay, handball, it's a handball. Uh, sh- a little bit shocking for McTominay because there's no reason for him to stick his hand out. So, had no problem with it being a penalty. But once again, it's consistency in the EPL. It's just like one game to the next game, you never know what you're going to get. But this is a penalty. Onada guessed the right way, but <laughs> McBurney puts in one that you just cannot save. Um, you cannot save. I mean, off the off the post and in, that's like unstoppable. 38th minute, uh, Anthony crosses to Rashford, who squares it for Hoyland inches wide. This is probably the best scoring chance for United. We finally are waking up here. Just come on, United, play some good football. We're dying here. You know, this is better, but, you know, a rough first half, 44th minute. Bruno smacks the bar from a nice free kick. Uh, 48th, another chance for Hoyland from a Rashford shot, but the keeper does very well, you know, so we kind of woke up post penalty, but man, another rough go plan a, we come out, we look slow Sheffield United up for us running at the back line, creating scoring chances. They created the penalty. These are no name guys. And you got to say, this is the worst team in the league. Oh, by the way, their back line is injured. They only have two center backs left. These are not their top defenders, and we are doing nothing against them as far as XG. They outshot us on XG. It's like you got to do better, United. Look, we can vibes all day, three points, but this is bad football right now. I mean, uh, they didn't create a penalty. It was a handball, so they just kicked the ball. The guy put his hand out, and it was a penalty. Dude, I'm not going to defend us playing down to the lowest team, the worst team in the league. We have to play better. Um, But, you know, a couple of these chances at the end of the first half. Hoyland, he's doing everything right except for scoring, at least in the EPL at the moment. Could have easily had two goals in the first half alone. And United, not great in the first half. Not good enough. But going to the second half, we were better. No, Yeah, I would say big turnaround. We, We had like a good 15 here in the second half. Sheffield United opened up with some early chances. Then we kind of got a grip. 53rd, Onana saves, out, shot outside the box. 56, Sheffield United keeper gave the ball away. Rashford find Hoyland, but his shot was muffed. 58, this United have to oh, score. This. Anthony finds Rashford, but his shot is just wide. Uh, then there was the triple sub that came in. Hey, kitchen sink time. And it, look, this is 1-1. I didn't feel like... You know, we were going to create too much. We put in Erickson, Garnacho, Martial for Hoyland, Anthony, McTominay. What do you make of this sub here? I mean, the only one that I didn't want to see, but then the coach explained it after the fact was Hoyland because I thought he was getting in all the right positions. Like, you know, he didn't get the goal um, in either of those big chances in the first half, but he's making all the right runs. And if anything, he's not getting fed enough. Anthony, yes. McTominay, yes. Hoyland, no, because Martial didn't offer much. Let's be honest. Hey, he's, he's effective by minutes, but he did not look too sharp in this game. 80, 67th minute, um, Rabat just destroyed the crossbar with this shot. Absolute rocket. I think he has seven senior goals all the time. You wouldn't know it with that hit. And United, look, I looked at that 1-1 prediction I made. I was like, this looks like it is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to admit it, sitting there watching it. I was like, if he's right, I'm going to be fucking pissed. But could we get an individual moment of brilliance here in 77th minute? Erickson letting it run. Dal, oh! Magnificent! Speculative, but quite brilliant. Well, Man United are a team this season that are relying on individual brilliance. And Diogo Dallo has just produced an unbelievable moment. What a strike from Dallo. I mean, like curler, everything you want to see. Sheffield keeper not wise to it off. He gets a piece of it, but still makes it in the net. But just what an effort. What a shot. I mean, got to credit Dallo there. Doing his trademark, checking his pulse like he's calm, but he's freaking out. As he like he won be. the league, sir. As you well, hey. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like it's, a, it's ironic celebration when you're like checking your pulse like you're calm, but he's like losing his mind. But it was a great goal. It was a great goal. And like, you know, the commentator said as we were watching the the replay, too much individual brilliance. I mean, at the end of the day, we can talk about all the woes, all the coaching issues, the elevens. Our, our attackers have scored one fucking goal all season across all the attackers. The only person that scored a goal is Marcus Rashford against Arsenal. Nobody else has scored up front. You've been relying on the Casemiro's, the Ericsson's, the Bruno's, the Delos to come up with goals. So we got to figure that out. And we got to start scoring goals because even when we play better on defense, we cannot score on this team. We had, you know, we gave them way too much life. We had a bunch of good chances and we just couldn't convert. 
Uh, 84th minute, Varon for Evans. 87th, Garnacho goes just why this was dangerous. He looked real lively he when did. he came on. He's super sub for Marcus Rashford. And then Mount came on, looked pretty sharp. Mason Mount, number one fan right here. And then uh, 91st minute, even better chance for Garnacho. He slices it wide. This one had to go in, unfortunately, but he, he was do a goal couldn't day. curl it. Uh, no. He looked like he was going to kill it off. That was it. Manchester United uh, do the business away. Sheffield United, sir. Expected goals. This is the one, uh, the stat I was looking at. Sheffield with 1.47 to United's 1.21. You say we create that many chances, but Sheffield with more. Again, worst team in the league, right? Far off a billion pounds spent. 12 shots for Sheffield, 14 for United. Six on target for Sheffield. That's kind of where the XG comes in. Five for United. They had 37% of the ball, but 63 to United. We own them, own the ball in their house. But, you know, that's just, you got to be saying it here. Worst team in the league, the XG, they outshot us on target. We had to get a moment of brilliance to steal it. This is where this team is, sir. Where do we go from here? We go to the next game, bro. All we do is move forward. One step at a time, one game at a time, bro. I'm not, like, everyone acting like, you know, you think I want to see this team muddle through games against Sheffield United when fucking Newcastle are going there and beating them 8 nil. Of course I don't. But right now... We're, we do have an injury crisis when your entire back four is injured. That it counts as an injury crisis. You can roll your eyes all you want. Sheffield was injured. Too. Sheffield was injured. Who the fuck are these players? Never even heard of them, bro. Like, they had one point going. No, I know, the but game. that's not good. It's like it's an indictment I, of United. It is an indictment of United. But either way, like I said at the beginning of the pod, that injury we, we crutches. Have, it, it, that injury crutches. Is it's looking, relevant. It's, it's like, like we have our now, entire yeah. back four is injured. The entire four, back four. <laughs> Every single player that would play and start is injured. And that matters. At the same time, What's our goal differential? we're not playing well. We're not playing well. What's our goal differential? <laughs> Negative two. Exactly. And that's because we haven't scored any goals. Like I said, we have our attackers have scored one goal and we've played eight games. That's not going to work. No, look, here's it. But I'm trying to be a practical fan, which is, you know, this is Manchester United. How many times do you get to say that? This is Manchester United. Keep we're talking yourself. about surviving. Winning yourself. the European Keep Cup. Yourself. So Keep we got a lot of trophies we've won. We're like the greatest winning football. We've won it all. Let's not forget that. And uh, it's been a rough ride this year. And I'm glad that we're winning. I want three points away at Bramall Lane. It's just I need something. This ga- These games, I've never had to drink, like, coffee at the end of the game because I'm just like, this is just so brutal to watch. We need something. We need to be going for it. We need an edge. We need, like, it seems the complacency when we're playing bad is what I have an issue with. It's like we're switching people. We're not seeing the energy away. This team's dying for a win. We come back from international break. We're playing the worst team. Let's get four or five. Get Hoyle in a brace. Start going. I just don't see the fire uh, with these guys. And it's a long season, and you got to be able to turn it up. Uh, and this is the perfect moment to turn it up. You get two weeks off international break. You got a big win. Come out strong. Dominate Sheffield. Beat Copenhagen and give City a go. I'm just worried about where we're headed because it's either going to be stringing these these wins together into some form, or it's going to be the dead cat balance. And maybe I'm just worried about what's coming down the line. All that could be true. You know, um, we have played poorly, but we're still in a position where we control our own destiny, right? Like if we can start putting some performances together and you don't have to beat City, but you have to go out there and play. Put some good football. Don't embarrass yourself. You're playing fucking home. We just lost Sir Bobby. This is a very important game. At the same time, it's a must win in the Champions League. We have zero points. Copenhagen has to be got. And you want to see something we could build on. Forget the injuries, right? I'm done with those excuses. We need, we have a midfield. We got to figure it out. We've got everyone available except for Casemiro. Kobe, like, you can't lean on him yet. But, like, Mount, Erickson, Bruno, Hannibal, Amrabat, Fucking McTominay, we have so many fucking midfielders. It's like it's time to start figuring that out and just go in for position based. And also, we gotta be quicker. We gotta be more direct. We gotta be more clinical. Hey, we can only go up from here. We're playing like garbage. So the fact that like, hey, we could put together um, a better style of play like we've seen last season. Like, I have some hope, but it, we have to do it sooner rather than later because City that could kill your confidence. You go out and lay a, like an absolute egg. Nobody's gonna be feeling very good about themselves. Yeah, it's just knowing when to switch it a little bit. It's like, I see what we're trying to do. We're trying to win the ball up high, you know, have odd men on the turnover. And we're, we're, those stats are improving. But like we saw that today, we're like, it opened up where Rashford had a few opportunities, couldn't convert. Uh, you know, as much as I make fun of Anthony being a bluffer, he it was better having him on the right. He was feeding in some balls. 
we're just not clicking. I think the manager has to like look at it and be like, hey, this win the ball high strategy just isn't working. Uh, maybe I need to act. like, why wouldn't you have Mount out there today? You, you sign him for that big ticket. You're, you're dropping him for Amrabat and McTom. And that, that doesn't make sense either. So we're kind of like one foot in one foot out. I, we kind of need to commit, just like go all in attack, go minded go for and it. beat Sheffield, you know? And I, and I feel like coming out nervy, you know, it's, it, there's something going on. I don't know what's going on at this club right now, but it ain't. You know, I, I, I got I got the Spidey sense, like the big like curb stomp from City is, sense is tingling right now. I'm like, we're, like Sheffield United is giving us a game. City aren't playing well. A lot of teams aren't playing well in this league. That's the best thing we got going for us is like you said, we're winning. We're putting away three points in games that we're not playing well and we're still in it. We're still. Close to top Shocking, four. Shocking, we're still in it. It's and uh, that's the best thing we got going is we're not playing well, but other teams aren't playing well, and we have to figure it out. And I really, like, this manager figured it out last year. This year, we got signed more players, but we're, it's taking longer to figure it out. And I haven't found that click that, like, oh, that's how we should be playing. These are the dogs we need on the field. And it, who knows? It could be distractions, off the pitch stuff, the takeover. I don't know. Excuse factory. You could probably tell me better than that. But man, we need uh, this this man, this manager, to be getting these lads going ASAP. Speaking of the man, let's listen to him. Winning and winning with a goal like that, a fitting way to mark the passing of one of Manchester United's most famous players. Yeah, <laughs> we are happy. Well, we did that, and as you said, yeah. We have to pay country um, attention and do it um, in, a, in a good way. And uh, first half, I think it wasn't the standard uh, from Sir Bobby Charlton. But the second half was, was a bit better. But yeah, of course, the news um, arrived and we are very sad. And our thoughts are with his family, especially his, um, his wife, Lady Norma, with his children, with his grandchildren. I think, yeah, with his passing, yeah, a legend, a giant uh, passing away. Uh, his achievements are so uh, immense and huge, uh, global. It's not only England, I think global. If you see the facts he achieved, uh, it's incredible. Uh, all his games, his titles, trophies, uh, the contribution he had with his goals. And then what I heard, I had never had the honor to meet them, but um, what I heard, he was, uh, despite all his trophies and games, he was so humble and integral, so big personality. I think he's an example for all of us um, as a footballer, but also uh, in the society and global wide. I, I realize you were kind of had a, a football game to play, but when you when you found out when the when the squad found out, did it have any effect on your preparation? Uh, I heard some, some players, uh, they got uh, inspiration from it, from it and they wanted uh, a win uh, to, uh, to mark it. Um, so yeah, it, it was an extra motivation, absolutely. How do you view the performance as a whole and, and what changes did you make in the second half to actually get that win? I mean, it was a bit of a grind at times. Uh, first half, was not a good game our sides we can talk long we can talk short no it was was uh, a poor game our sides and you see it often after international but especially with us with so many changes every time in lineups then the routines are not there but especially uh, tonight in the first half uh, we uh, we allow them to play, make it their game and um, we had two opportunities well, uh, look, it, you know, Ten Hag not pulling any punches, saying it like it is, not up to the standard for the first half. Played better than the second. I think that is a good way to look at it and reminds me of what he would say last season. And how did things go last season? They were certainly better than this season. So, you know, we can't draw a conclusion 20% uh, of the way into the season. I'm just hoping things get better because here you and I are every game breaking this down, talking about this team for an hour. 
And as just fans, forget being podcasters, right? American Red Devils, 500, almost almost at 500, sir. I think we're, this is 491. Could be wrong. Um, we're not podcasters, sir. We're just Muppets. Yes, we're Muppets. We're just but fans. I, you know There's what? nothing else. Podcaster is not like a great accreditation. Like I feel they, like podcasters they, they care. Any moron, like, uh, by the way, like, if you notice, like, every moron has a pod. So, like, <laughs> saying you're a podcaster is not saying, like, you're a Nobel laureate. It's like, we have a podcast. Yeah. But I love this team, and this team is bad for your health, bro. It's just, it is. It's like, we're not, we're not up to the standard. We're so far off. I'm rooting. We're rooting for the team to play better. And we got to start playing better on Tuesday. Because Sir, shitfootball.com holiday sale. Halloween sale. Yeah, you know, it's that's not even the holidays. Shit, it hasn't yeah. even been Halloween yet. You know, that's just it's early right sale. New Year's. Early sale. <laughs> early New sale. Year's. Discounts everywhere. We got shit football for you. Speaking of shit football, sir, we have a next match. Let's go. Let's hear the music. At least the torture. At least this isn't shit. Sir, that's right. The angelic voices are back. Copenhagen coming to Old Trafford. Got to slap them up. Need a win. We got zero points in the group. Absolutely dying. How are we feeling? Must win. You know, if we want to keep the Champions League dream alive, home game against the worst team in the group other than us, it's a must win. There's no other There's no other way to say it. It's like they're on one point. We're on zero points. We get a game. We get a win. Depending on how the Bayern game goes, and if they win, they run away with it. It's gonna be us and Galatasaray. We gotta win. I mean, there's nothing else I can say about it. I think <laughs> I mean, I we know. gotta win. We gotta win, bro. It's like we don't have to beat City, but we gotta beat Copenhagen. So this is a must win, and it's a must win at home, and it's a must win with also some better football because this is a team we should be able to dominate, bro. Like no no disrespect to Denmark or Copenhagen, but we're Manchester fucking United. I can only imagine what their wage bill is. Let's go for all out attack. Let's like forget this. Like we don't need a double CDM. We don't need a single CDM. I, I would just literally like mount Erickson Bruno, like proper midfield. Like let's try and play some good attacking sequences. Something. Give me something. that while it lasts. Uh, the snapshot bubble, of bubble, Group bubble, A, bubble, bubble, easy, bubble, easy, bubble. easy. That's coming. Easy. <laughs> it's coming. Get ready. Uh, of course it's coming. It's on the board? Where's that? We already knew. I, we, I called we it. Already we already knew. I literally called knew. it in the we season preview. We I said we'd. Knew. I said we'd finish fifth and win the Europa League. And the only way, the only way you can yeah, win the Europa League is if you finish third in the group in the Champions League. Yeah. So here's Group A. Let's just get through this. It's like Bayern Munich, six points. Galatasaray, four points. Oh, yeah, they beat us at home. Brutal. Brutal. That that loss with Onana. Yeah, oh, not a brutal. fucking nightmare game. Uh, Copenhagen has won. Uh, we got none for the first time ever. Just embarrassing. We got to just start it right. It starts at home against FC Copenhagen. Uh, big game. Absolutely, like you said, giant game. We got to be up for it. No excuses. No coming out. Poopy pants, FC. Yeah, da, da, da. Like, we got to, like, the urgent, the, I just, what's killing me is the urgency keeps going and going. Uh, Copenhagen, lifetime. We've won two, lost one. 
Uh, first time we played them, 2006, in the Champions League. We beat them 3-0. Tied them in November. Uh, we actually lost to them 1-0 in November, and then we beat them in the Europa League, one nothing. Five coming in for Copenhagen. They beat uh, Linsing in the Danish Cup, 9 nothing. Uh, they lost to Midgetland. They lost to Bayern 2-1. They drew AGF, and then they beat Vesia BK 2-1, sir. They're obviously coming in, doing well, but they don't play a lot of big teams. FCK, also known as FC Kubenhaun, uh, was founded in 1992 <laughs> as a superstructure on top of Kobenhaun uh, Bold Club and Bold Club in 1903 with Kubenhaun Bold Club from... 1876 being the oldest club in continental Europe. So everyone claiming that oldest club <laughs> title. I'll say that. <laughs> like it was a little merger, uh, <laughs> and FCK was founded. They have won 15 Danish football championships and a record nine Danish cups. They play its matches in Parkin Stadium, which also serves as a venue for the uh, De Denmark national football team. And since their foundation, FCK, have a fierce rivalry with Broinby. Uh, I studied abroad in Denmark uh, in the mid-2000s, and this is how I got into European football, really. I went over there. You know, We, we started following them, uh, following United in the early 2000s. And then just going to games in Copenhagen at the Parkin Stadium and seeing the fierce robbery with Broinby. I did go to that match, the Derby, unbelievable. And like I said, at the Parkin Stadium, they they sell you beers like in a six in a, right? in a six holster. <laughs> so you can it's not like in the United States you only sell you two. It's like you can buy twelve and carry them back to your. And they're seat. delicious. And yes, beer. I was like twenty at the time. Can we go? I want to go. We went. Yeah, it's great. It's a great stadium. I can't even get a cold beer at Old Trafford. Uh, but again, a warm Carling in a plastic bottle. No, but you can bring them to your seat, which you can't <laughs> do in England. So it's not like you got to drink them all there. Uh, but regardless, uh, much respect for uh, FC Kubenhaun. I have a special place in my heart given that I studied abroad there. As far as who plays for them. Got no idea. Uh, Elunusi, uh, he played in the EPL at some point. That that name haunts me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like, uh, but Hoyland did come from the academy, so Hoyland's kind of coming back. So he should have a hell of a game. Um, obviously, going to the Park and Stadium, I think, will be a special night as well. Um, but it should beat them. Should beat them. You know, they're they're big fish, small pond in Denmark. Uh, injuries for United. Martinez, apparently he's coming back January. Oof, uh, Jesus, Malasia's December. Juan Basaka's November. Uh, Maynu could be could feature at Copenhagen. Uh, Reggione could feature against Copenhagen. Casemiro could be back against City. When's Shaw coming back, sir? Uh, Luke Shaw is late November, Thanksgiving. Yeah, you because know, oh, he's fuck. coming back for the big feast, meat pie. <laughs> And then Ahmad's Boss. unknown. So, uh, look, it, obviously Sancho. See ya. Uh, playing hooky at the moment for Manchester United. So, still a lot of injuries. Excuse factory hanging or hanging the hat on the fact that we're watching bad football only because of injuries. Um, oh, we're watching a lot of bad football. Watching a lot of bad football we're today. Bad football. So, no we excuse. Watch, to, we watch bad football. But for like, like how many? Like, this has to be a no excuse playing. Like, champion. This is a. No excuse play like a champ. You got to be Copenhagen at home. Yes. Injured. Yes. Not injured. You got to beat them. So. They're worse than Sheffield United, who's the worst team in the league. Like this, you have to beat Copenhagen. And no, I mean, no disrespect to Copenhagen. That's a coin flip. That's a coin flip. I bet you that's they a are, coin bro. flip. Uh, maybe. I bet you will struggle just like we did against Sheffield United. <laughs> I have when we no go doubt. play Copenhagen we'll, away. I'll, I bet I, you it will struggle. I, just I have as no bad. doubt we'll play equally bad. But either way, get into the 11s. Forget the excuse factory. Let's go. Let's go to the hype factory. I got Onana in net. I'm going to do Delo, Lindelof, Maguire, Reguillon. All action midfield. Erickson, Mount, Bruno. Let's go. Let's see it. Rashford on the left. Hoyland up front. Garnacho on the right. So who you got? You got no defender. No CDM. No CDM, uh, bro. I don't need a CDM. It's Copenhagen. I say I got the same. Onana, Delo, Lindelof, Maguire, Reguillon. I got Mount, Bruno, Amrabat. Okay. I mean, those are the dogs. Like, that's what you signed these guys for. You didn't sign Mount and Amrabat to bench them. It's true. Like Mount's uh, got to play. Like, you got to play him. Uh, makes sixty million. Mount, number one Mount fan. You got to play him. I'm the number one Mount fan. 
fan of the fan club. Keep Mason saying how much you like club. him. How much you like him? You like him a lot? <laughs> like, manager Mason. doesn't play him? Like, you kidding me? Against Sheffield United? Like, come on. It's like Rashford on the left. Hoyland, y- you know, you got to play the bluffer, Anthony, on the right. You got to play him. He, you know, the bluffer. He's, it's a price tag. He's not as good as he thinks he is. Of and he's he, not. He's just. He's not an $85 million he's not, player. He's bro. like. If it's a coin flip between him and Palestri, you know, you know, like who's better on the right at the end of the day? Because you just need someone who knows how to play on the right, and he can. So there you go. Hey, hit a brace, changed my mind, Anthony. Uh, sir, you got the bookies here. Uh, United. Here comes the money. Money, money, money. Dollar, 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 dollar bill. I was looking, sir. I was looking. Uh, United, the favorites, of course. Minus 300, plus 420 for the draw. And oof, like I said, bigger, bigger odds than Sheffield. Plus 750 on the road, Copenhagen. So we're giving those the odds, what is your score prediction? Uh, we're going to beat them uh, 2-1 is what I would say. I think you got to be Copenhagen coming into your house. If we don't, you know. Getting Grand Potter. He's next man up. Brutal. That, that, that's the scariest thing. <laughs> that is the scariest. That's like literally the okay. only person that looks more English than Gareth Southgate. <sighs> Two nil. Good, not great. Two nil. <laughs> it's real confident. Plus seven fifty, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, I'd be betting Copenhagen all day. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. United in the news. I'm losing it over here. I'm losing it. Uh, like we've been discussing this whole podcast, the Sir Bobby Charlton news is the biggest uh, news at the moment. Passed away at the age of 86. Thought we would go through his career. Won four titles. Two Community Shields. One FA Cup. One European Cup. The first European Cup. Any English club won. And w- marking the 10th anniversary in 1968 of the Munich air disaster, beating Benfica, sir, he at a Wembley. Scored a brace. Scored a brace. I mean, like, just what a game. And uh, the World Cup, you got to throw. I mean, like, World Cup winner, Ballon d'Or winner. I mean, you know, you look at the people that won the Ballon d'Or for Manchester United, Dennis Law. Sir Bobby Charlton, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, it's like when it's are we going to get Anthony's next to, to get <laughs> yeah. the win the Ballon d'Or? He he's it. coming. He ain't winning it, bro. You know, he ain't winning it. I feel like oh. like we're miles away. I mean, like you know, Paul Paul, Paul Yagba. He had a shout. You he know, what, never he, winning the Ballon. I mean, bar. that's I know, but he that game he had in that final. You know, I feel like you touch a different level with that, that World Cup final. The game he had. His he was lights out for United. He yeah, cashed for, in after that. He game. was done. He was good for like but four he, games. But that was, was an amazing for, performance in a, yes, in a World Cup game. final. You know, so uh, regardless, what a career! Seven hundred fifty-eight appearances for Manchester United. Two hundred forty-nine goals. That record stood for a long time. And I thought it was an interesting stat here. Only nine players have won the World Cup, the European Cup, and the Ballon d'Or during those their. their their career. That was Sir Bobby Charlton, Franz Beckenbauer, Jared Muller, Paolo Rossi, Zidane, 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 Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Kaká, and Lionel Messi. And so that's the club that he's in. And there's only nine. Messi's in it. You got Kaká, <laughs> Kaká Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of a titans list. of European football and world football in there. And He's like the OG, you know, one of the first to do it. So you got to give a shout out to him. And also on the on a lighthearted note, you got to say, I mean, the comb over that he was incredible. running with. Just incredible. Is something that you'll never see again. I mean, it, it's just like. <laughs> you won't. It was like, it, it's like he had the most horrific comb over and then he started playing and it just flapped over and <laughs> it was he amazing. didn't give a. I mean that had to intimidate his opponent. Honestly, you know? like it's like that, the, and also just the photos you can see of it online are just incredible. So just also you have to add the note that he'll always be known, at least on this pod, as like having the best comb over in the history of ath- like athletics. Nobody's ever performed better with a, you know, rougher looking comb over than Sir Bobby. The best is just like the mid game look. It was like he would start a game and then the, it would just be completely to one side. <laughs> By the end of it, that is lighthearted, given the occasion. 
but it's important to lighten the mood. But enough. I mean, you can't say enough platitudes for this man. One, the UEFA Youth Cup, uh, excuse me, the FA Youth Cup with Manchester United three times, joined at 15, went through the Munich area tester at 20, obviously rebuilding the team, losing his best man, one of his best friends, Duncan Edwards, and then winning it, the whole thing, winning the European title in 68, winning the World Cup in 66 with England. And that list is a list of elites and arguably the greatest English player of all time, arguably the greatest Manchester United player of all time, at least from a legendary standpoint. For me, it's not arguable. Like, it's he's the best. Trust me, but some numpties would be like, Cristiano Ronaldo is better, which, sure. But, hey, he ain't, he he ain't going to well, never be in that list, bro. He didn't win the World Cup. Exactly. And he'll right. never will. And he never will. Yeah, I, that that's a, sir, that's a great point. You know, for me, he's the greatest because it's – he stayed longer, right? So he had a longer tenure, 758 appearances, had the all-time goal scoring record, the European Cup, the Ballon d'Or. Combined with that, it kind of makes you number one. And you know, and he survived Munich. No, I, that you're talking about just the story of you can't tell the story of Manchester United without Sir Bobby Charlton, yeah. right? Just like you can't tell the story without Sir Matt. Or Sir Alex Ferguson, or John Henry Davies, and, the, and you know, it's really he's the only p- player on right. the Mount Rushmore. Right. You want to talk about who made this club? There's four on it. He's on it. Only player on it. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo, David Beck. You know, these Rooney, guys aren't even on Rooney, it. They ain't on it, bro. Even the Gigsies, the Skulls. If Rooney Gigs. comes back, manages Manchester United, and like wins it. <laughs> if yeah. Rooney, if Old dog, dark ale, big head Rooney takes it, drags his club back to the promised land. He could be up there. So I'm saying the story has not been told, but I believe he'll he'll manage this club uh, once again, and he could be. You know, we'll see. He's at Birmingham City now. That's where he landed. He left DC. So there's gonna be less shenanigans. We're gonna lose out all the MLS stories. He was having a good time in DC, um, and I think he played against. Middlesbrough yesterday where Carrick's managing. He lost 1-0, but hey, I, you, know, I, you know how I feel. I love Wayne Rooney. I'm rooting for him. And uh, maybe we could add him to the soundboard someday, sir, of all the fallen managers that have come and gone. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Uh, well, we got some more news on the takeover. You want to run us through this? So a lot of comings and goings. There's supposed to be a vote on Thursday, this last Thursday, um, with the board. That did not happen, as John pointed out very correctly. It's like, that doesn't matter. That was like the quarterly board meeting. They don't need to wait until the next quarterly board meeting in order to vote on a a new financing agreement. Um, But we're seeing more and more smoke around the Jim Radcliffe bid for the 25%, including the footballing stake. That's what it's been coalescing over the last week is like there's definitely going to be... Jim in charge of the football operations. There's going to be this board that's set up, right? It's going to be a three man board, including Jim, Sir David Brailsford, who is at Ineos, who's been super involved in their push on the cycling side, and Joel Glazer. So, effectively, obviously, none of this has been confirmed, but this is what we're hearing. This is from actually the FT, uh, a legit <laughs> news source, was saying that like everything around football is going to be decided by this three man team. Now, the real question is like, A, is this true? And B, you know, there are certain things where football and commercial kind of like jut up against each other. Who gets to ultimately decide around those things? A lot of this is going to be the devil in the detail, but either way, we're hearing a lot of noise like, oh, they still need to negotiate certain stuff. Oh, they, you know, he might not be in for January. Now you're hearing a lot of propaganda around Jim and like how he wants to bring in Paul Mitchell, how he wants to increase the size of the stadium, how he wants to invest in the team, how he wants to like, He's going to put pressure on Eric Ten Hag, which I know certain fans care about. Um, already talking about his replacement. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, as long as it's like not fucking pressure me? results. Grand, yeah, Graham win, Potter, bro. Win. Yeah, win. 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 Trophies, Bringing back standards to the titles, club. Bringing back standards. Titles, sir. Titles. We need to be thinking titles. Let's start it? with a title. A title. Let's start with one. Hungry for a title. Let's start with a. How about a title Starving. race? I'll do a race. Just like Starving. take me in April, bro. I need a take race. me in April. Take me in April. <laughs> Sir, I'll tell you this. This ain't good for your health. Title race ain't good for your health either. I'll <laughs> That's tell you. true. If we, I, oh, I'll 12, tell you, you know what's better? 12 was a killer. You know what's better? Watching us struggle to beat Sheffield United than what <laughs> happened to Arsenal last season. I'd much rather be where we are now. Uh, so than would I. Like, that close and bottle. That might have broken me, bro. Like <laughs> That might have broken me, bro. <laughs> the pod, pod, pod had to be on a hiatus. Uh, uh, but getting back to this deal. Getting back to this deal. What's your thoughts? Uh, 
you know, we had like the, the Sir Jim's gonna take over football, and then the players are like, well, no, 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 we're in charge. No, Joel's still involved. He's a big, uh, big deal. Uh, you know, they're just can't handle anything. Can't take an L. Uh, <laughs> you know, but either way, I think what is coalescing in the media. In the Telegraph with the Paul Mitchell and all the the football board is we've said that this club needs to be restructured and turned into a modern football uh, organization. And if this deal is the catalyst to do that, that's great, right? Like totally got to address the stadium, add more seats, make more money, like make Maui it more gym. fun to go, like, you know, s- sell the sponsorship. They're going to probably do that. Get more money in, sell stock on the stock exchange, have that money come into the club. The Glazers have only sold stock as secondary, which means they take the money. If they have a primary uh, offering, the club gets the money, right? That's another way to pay down the debt. There's lots of options here. And if you have another smart guy like uh, Brailsford and Ratcliffe and Joel Glazer, if they could be the catalyst to get it, getting these things going, setting up the plans, this is a moment. The Glazers not selling to Qatar. And bringing in Ratcliffe is a moment to restructure the club, restructure the debt, redo the stadium, redo the training facility. It's just going to take a little longer, but as long as that is the the uh, the focus, and this deal is the catalyst to do so, time will tell. But it sounds like we're heading in the right direction. Now, there's no deal done yet. You have to caveat that. So let's just see where it goes, and we'll keep you posted every step of the way. Sir, you decided that you want to include something about the 2030 FIFA World Cup. How are you doing? Well, I don't believe we've spoken about this yet, have we, sir? You know, a lot has happened in the last few weeks. I thought it'd be important. You know, we're football fans. We Obviously, we always talk about Manchester United. But in the last 10 days, the 2030 World Cup was announced. Um, and Manchester United, you know, America Red Devil, shame on us. We somehow have not talked about it yet. So I thought that would be important to mention. So the 2030 World Cup, it's a doozy of a boondoggle. Um, so the main hosts are the joint bid between Spain, Portugal, and Morocco, right? But at the same time, one of the other bidders was this Uruguay, Paraguay, Argentina bid. The whole thinking was the original World Cup was in 1930. It was hosted in Uruguay. Let's do the centennial in the same place where the original was. So the this is the FIFA. This is why the F- FIFA is like the most impressively corrupt organization because they were able... There's all these rules around like... When you host a World Cup in one geo, well, that geo is excluded for like the subsequent two to three World Cups. So they knew, this is FIFA, that they had to do an Asia World Cup. They've already done one. That was Qatar. Uh, they have to do a Europe one, an Africa one, and a America's one, South America one, right? Because North America is Canada, USA, and Mexico. Um, they basically did all three in one. They did whoa, South whoa, whoa. America. North America is Canada, USA, and Mexico? I'm just like, some people on this pod, <laughs> I'm just reminding everybody. I'm just, I can't, I can't help myself. Shut I can't the fuck up. <laughs> so what I'm saying is like, they found a way to check off three boxes of the of the geos that are involved in the World Cup bids at one time, right? So only the ones that are, the, there's basically three games getting played in South America. So they got a World Cup. Morocco is obviously splitting the bid with the Iberia, so they get a World Cup, and basically they're just giving it to 2034. Who's getting the World Cup? Who do you think? The fucking Saudis, bro. So, like, exciting. Spain, Portugal, Morocco, that would be a terrific World Cup. We're excited for that. I'm excited for that. But the real fucking drub is that, like, they basically set the stage for a guaranteed 2034 Saudi Arabia World Cup, and that's the real travesty. So they got to refill the cash coffers. Apparently well, they're going don't broke. Don't want to go to Saudi Arabia. No, I'm Come good. On. I'm, like, you know, I'm we're good. Going. I'm good. In 2034, we're going. It's going to be like this guy. You know, we go to every World Cup. 2034. Alice is going to hang out here. <laughs> hang out in Cali. I'm good. <laughs> Al- I'm Alice is going to hang out in Cali like doing Spain. hard Maybe work like here. Spain. You're, you're doing hard work <laughs> I'm here. Doing hard work all the time. He's going to be doing the Lord's work here in Northern California instead of joining the boys going out to the World Cup. You know, we're going to go. Riyadh. Uh, re- hey, hey, regardless, um, a lot going on there. You know, they're probably building a lot of things. We'll, we'll see. It's not hot. You know, probably <laughs> will be another winter Have World Cup, heard, right? So yeah. they're gonna screw that up again. It'll be another fucking shit show. Of Sir, a season. it is twenty twenty three. You know, I'll be happy to be around for twenty thirty four World Cup yeah, in eleven enough. years. Fair so enough. if it is, I'll go. Uh, but look, twenty thirty, big one, twenty twenty six, USA. Can't wait. Going to be amazing. And obviously, we're going to both of these 
World Cups. I just hope the U.S. men's national team fire Greg Burkheffer <laughs> Thank along you. the way. I, you know I mean, what? Now you know, I feel better. Is, uh, you. It's America Red Devils. We love the U.S. men's national team, but another organization as dysfunctional or not even more dysfunctional than Manchester United is the U.S. men's national team, unfortunately. Correct. And just like hiring American coaches don't know nothing. And uh, so without going to a tangent there, we do cover World Cup qualifying. So if you're listening to the podcast and you live in the United States, you like the U.S. men's national team. When we get to World Cup qualifying, we will cover it here on the podcast. Jumping into fan questions uh, at Orson Wonder, quote, happy with the win and simultaneously wondering why not just keep Ole around if this is how we're going to play. Worried about Man City next Saturday. I am hitting the nail on the head with Orson. I agree. This is what, what the fuck are you talking about? This is Ole Ball. This is Vibes FC. We got this is you don't see the similarity between Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ole just played counterattack. That's all he had. And as soon as they figured out that we played counterattack. What counter are we attack, playing? Not counterattack. I wish we were playing counterattack. We'd be scoring more goals. Uh at D underscore Cole. For all the hate he's gotten, Harry Maguire has been absolute pro when called up for the club. He'll never lived up to the price tag, but he could have went the Sancho route. For the love of God, this club needs a new spine, two to three new center backs, and at least one young defensive midfielder. Back Eric Ten Hag with signings. Sir, you seem to be feeling that way. Let the Dutchman spend. I think any normal football club, there's a structure. We don't have a structure. So we're letting our manager run wild like every manager before him, and that doesn't work. Every other top club in Europe, they have a football director who's like a backstop against the manager. Manager wants a player, and the football director goes, eh, he's expensive. Have you looked at this guy? Right now, we have one guy doing everything, and that's not sustainable. So better or worse, that's where we're at. So like, if you bring in a Paul Mitchell to push back on Eric Ten Hag, I'd be curious where that comes out with because that's how a normal football club runs. We're not in 20, 2010 where Fergie would be like, I want that guy, that guy, that guy. And that's who they'd get. This is like, you don't do this. So that's why we continue to fucking play shit football and not win anything and spend tons of money. At Marco Nunez 408, quote, when will we have an identity? I still have no idea what we're trying to do out there. Sir, you think we have an identity? What is that identity? What are we doing out there? All right. What, uh, what? I'm just saying, I don't know. I mean, this, I, I this the the, like people forget, like, I guess we're all fucking goldfish. Like, do we not remember last season? Do we not have a style of play last year? Do we not finish third after one of the worst seasons in EPL history for us? Do we not win a trophy? Do we not go to another final? Was there not a style of play between these games? Have we seen it thus far? No. No, but we saw no, it last, last year, year. We were trying to play But it, there and was it a style click. of play. There but, was clearly a style of play. High press, direct, right? Yeah, but then like the goalie couldn't do it, so then we got a new goalie who can do it. But now we have the new goalie, but we're not really doing the build up from the back because we can't play through. So it's kind of all mashed up. It, it just again, I I agree with um, Marco here. I don't think uh, the identity is there and the place. Like starting today at Sheffield United, uh, yesterday at Sheffield United, I got nothing. I I, I don't know uh, what Plan A is really. Well. Let's fix it. <laughs> I mean, what do you like? <laughs> let's, call, let's call it a wrap at the end of the season. Like, like it's October, you know? If he's a... I don't know what people want. You know, sir, like, put you in the hot seat. Like, I'm just throwing oh, him at you, like, sir. Like, you go know? for it. It's no, okay. Like, you guys it's on okay. Olay, like, go. go watch... Hey, here you go. You want a fucking gift? Go watch the Manchester United, Manchester City, 2 nil game against Ole Gunnar, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as the manager. Go watch the fucking... Sorry, I wouldn't be talking about that game given City's around the corner. You know, Yeah, like and you know what? Dangerous. We'll probably lose. You're they're the best dangerous. team in the world. We'll probably lose. They're but, not playing great at the moment, But they're still actually. the best team in the world. Uh, at Red Devil Woody, got three points from a scrappy game. That's all that counts. Good goal from Delo. Rest in peace for Bobby. Legend of the game and great man off the park. I think that's a great tweet. At Beebs UNF. We clearly need a left back other than Lindelof. Do we have updates on Shaw, Region, or Wambasaka? I said Region back for Copenhagen. Shaw is late November. Wambasaka just November as a whole. At Gray Internet, quote, Sirs, that was an interesting performance. If this was any other team, we lose and are a bit embarrassed off the pitch. I back Ten Hog, but he's got to change it up. They looked better in the second half, but that first half reminded me of the Ragnick days. Open heart surgery. Woo! I like that. I that mean, I back supreme. Him. I back him. I back him, but he's got to change shit up. Like I could be critical and supportive at the same time. So, 
this is a great opportunity against Copenhagen, a team that you have to be beaten. They'll be like, we got to get a style of play. Let's 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 go out there. I mean, I don't know, bro. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking kidding me? It's like, what do you want from me? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's you know, I, I think it's easy to take cheap shots. They're not playing well. It's about it's a marathon, not a sprint at this club, and there's a lot going on above uh, the manager right now. And let's hope that I I actually think shit football tough to watch. Just get strong cold brew coffee, get you through it. <laughs> um, honestly, I literally need to drink like strong cold brew to get through the games. But it's all about what's happening in this deal with Sir Jim. And if we can get a footballing board and get a director of football and change the way that, and like raise some money, lower the debt obligation, you know, reset this team, you know, pick back Ten Hog or get another guy back him, like figure it out, right? Like get the director of football in. He's like the GM. Let him assess everything that's going on right. and then like hire Paul Mitchell or another world-class director of football right. and have him assess situation and listen to him. Like Rangnick assessed it and said, open heart surgery, get rid of everybody. <laughs> and they didn't listen to him. And they didn't listen to <laughs> yeah. him. You know? So who, who knows? I really would like to be, I would like to be interested in how that went down between Eric Ten Hag and, and Rangnick. Because from what I, the the rumors are, he didn't really care what Rangnick thought, and it, it, you know, I I kind of it's kind of one of those things where it's true. It's like there it's was on the a club, bro. It's not. I mean, like he wasn't even there yet, and how is he getting blamed for it too? I'm just saying. I'm but a, you know what I I'm mean. Not a muppet the for the club this didn't ball like guy. him, and it was kind of like this but whole thing. Whole, it just didn't. It, it's a bad situation it overall like at the fools. club. It made the club look like a bunch of fucking fools. Exactly. And the whole point is, I don't even give a fuck about Eric Ten Hag, bro. The point is, yeah, but you Rangnick's need to build, the if you, o- operator. On, if you need to build, you need to build a structure for the next guy because he's not gonna. If he's not the guy, you need to build for the next guy right the whole point is like we need to do it because somebody's gonna have to figure it out and the only way they're gonna be able to figure it out is they have a proper football structure above them which we have not had for 11 years since gill and fergie left and that's the that's that so it's like it doesn't have to be under eric ten hog but like whoever's gonna bring this club back to the promised land has to be supported without having richard <laughs> richard arnold and john murtaugh as like his ones and twos Clowns, baby. Let's go. All right. Look, that's it. That's the podcast. You like the America Red Devils? Support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash America Red Devils. America Red Devils dot store. All your merch. New scarf. EFL Cup. Code EFL Cup. $5 off. America Red Devils dot com. Get your fix. Like, subscribe, support. Do all that stuff. You know, we're 100% fan back. So everything you do makes a difference. Appreciate everybody out there so give us our top 10 cities last seven days number one how you doing how you doing los angeles california brooklyn new york dublin ireland new york new york chicago illinois atlanta georgia houston texas san francisco california melbourne australia and somewhere else manchester england there you go and there's only one way to close out the pod today sir the fans in bramble lane yesterday it's only one bobby charlton it's only one bobby charlton one bobby charlton that little cat.